Um, Brian, I think you're breathing into the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another um, Boris Effects virtual NAB live stream. Um, today, we're going to be looking at Mocha Pro with Mary Poplin. Uh, we're going to be looking at the new improvements in Mocha Pro um, 2020.5. Say hello, Mary. You are on mute. I saw that. There Hi. you go. <laughs> I also uh, didn't want to be breathing into the mic. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. I'm Mary Poplin. I am a senior product specialist at Boris FX, and um, I'm going to be showing you some Mocha Pro today. Cool. Thank you, Mary. And Ross Shane is joining us as well. Say hello, Ross. Hey, guys. Great to see you both. 
thanks yeah. for everyone for uh, tuning with us during these times. Really appreciate all your time. So today um, we are continuing our virtual NAB live stream. We're going to be looking at Mocha Pro. Mary's going to take us. Uh, Mary is Mocha Queen. She's going to be taking us through um, planar tracking with Mocha Pro and the new improvements in 2020.5. We're going to be giving away some amazing prizes as well. So everyone go ahead and like, subscribe, or share. Um, that's the way to enter to win any of our prizes we're giving away. Let me look and see what we're um, going to be giving away at this stream. We have some amazing prizes from our super generous um, partners and sponsors. We're going to be giving away an online class to future media concepts, a license for Vegas Pro, a one-year subscription to Avid Media Composer, a one-year subscription to the Boris Effects Bundle, one-year subscription to Silhouette Paint, one-year subscription to um, Silhouette, we're going to be giving away a license for Isotope RX-7, amazing audio plugins. Um, and we're going to be giving away the Core Melt Chromatic and Paint X bundle. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. As my friend Bren ba Ben Brownlee says, smash that like button nonstop um, and subscribe or share. That's the way to enter to win. We are streaming on a whole bunch of different platforms right now. So we're on a couple different YouTube channels and a couple different Facebook channels. Um, channels as well so um if you're in any of those live streams we'll just be picking randomly all around and we'll be announcing the winners at the end of the presentation um also the nab sale is happening right now that is 50 percent off new perpetual multi-product bundles so sapphire and mocha continuum continuum and sapphire any combination of our products those multi-product bundles those are 50 percent off and 25 percent off everything else so if you want to upgrade to what um, mary's going to show you today if you want to upgrade to the latest mocha pro that is 25 percent off it's 25 percent off subscriptions new licenses um, and renewals for all our products so without further ado i will present to you the esteemed mary poplin i'm going to hand it over to you mary okay perfect i'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see what we're looking at and I'm going to go over some of what Mocha is uh, with Ross Shane here. So let's go ahead and hit share. And all right. So let's talk a little bit about what Mocha is used for. So Mocha is a planar tracker, right? And we get used for visual effects all over the world in just about every production. And we're a planar tracker, which is different than a point tracker and feature tracker. It means we actually track textures. And we actually use those textures um, and that tracking data to create all sorts of visual effects. One of those things is rotoscoping. One of those is match moving. Um, you know, some of that is 3D camera solving. And those are all cornerstone pieces to the visual effects tool set. And I'm going to let Ross chime in too. Yeah, Mary Strong, some of the shots that we used actually when we won the uh, Emmy Award this past fall, um, you saw some, you know, just sort of a compilation of different kinds of projects. Um, Mocha has been used on tons of feature films. You saw some Harry Potter in there, um, lots of TV shows. We were lucky enough to get uh, some clips from Stranger Things. This this one clip here is a uh, clip from, uh, what was it called? Uh, no, I'm spacing on that show. I can't um, remember. Yeah, but uh, it's been used on many, many, uh, you know, famous shot uh, films uh, and TV shows for, for tracking, for roto, for set extensions. Yeah, um, for matte paintings and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, and Mocha is used, you know, Mocha Pro is used to support uh, After Effects and Nuke and Flame, uh, products like that. For those that a lot of people know us through the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud, where Mocha AE is bundled free with every After Effects. So that's always like, that's a good starting point for, for a lot of users. Well, uh, yeah, and the nice thing, sorry, Brian. No, I was going to say that, that first of all, the, these clips never get old for me. <laughs> I <laughs> love watching them, but that, that, green book, that green book head replacement, man, that really, that really um, blows me away every time I see it. Yeah, that was done by a company called Pixel Magic that they they uh, basically tracked uh, and used a, a stunt piano player to replace replace the body and uh, you know replace the actor's head on top of a stunt piano player on, on almost every shot. Very very cool stuff. Amazing. We have a tutorial on how to do that on our website that I did for Halloween a couple of years ago. Oh, your headless horde horseman one. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty goofy and low budget, but you know what? It is a. Uh, it's a breakdown of the technique, which is basically stabilizing the head and then replacing it. What we're really known for, though, um, as you can see in this, is um, you know screen inserts. That's kind of the bread and butter of Mocha. Um, and the nice thing about screen inserts is when people 
when people do screen inserts, and I'll, I'll show a little bit of this, um, people do screen inserts, one of the things they always tend to make a mistake on is they'll put tracking markers all over their shiny screen. Um, and all that does is create extra paintwork for you. But because Moat is a planar tracker, if you draw around the edge of the screen, you actually end up getting a much better track and you don't have to do the paintwork. So um, I'm not going to talk too much more about this. I'm going to dive in and show you, or rather than tell you, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new features. Um, and then I'm going to go through these shots and show you. So uh, Boris Fix uh, Mocha is an award winning tool. We've we actually won an Academy Award and an Emmy, um, which, you know, not to brag or anything, but I'm going to. Um, and uh, the, some of the new features we have um, are we have made improvements to the um, area brush, the magnetic spline and edge snapping tools. Um, we added mega plates. Uh, we have Autodesk Flame Support. Um, we have OCI co um, OCIO Color Management, which is going to be important for those of you working in a studio pipeline. And um, we also added After Effects uh, Power Pins this year. Now, the improvements in 2020.5 are improved planar tracking. So for those of you that have been um, used Mocha in the past, uh, you ever notice when you get too close to the front of the screen how Mocha folds in on itself um, because the planar tracking data can't recognize negative values? Our wonderful engineers have fixed that, so thank you team. And um, that's now we can track all sorts of shots that we weren't able to uh, track as well as pretty much Mocha tracks everything else. So we now have faster renders for our motion blur rendering. We have made improvements to our area brush and edge, edge snapping tools, which means we added this thing called gap fill and multi-snap. So you can now take multiple points and snap them and uh, you can just color around something to grab a shape really quickly. And I'm gonna show you that. Um, we have improved our media support. We now have a G Streamer media engine. Um, we also have a G Mask Tracer export, and it allows you to export roto shapes and axis data into Flame. And of course, I mentioned OCIO color. Hey, Mary, can we hang on the slide for one second? Of course, we can. Yeah, I just want to kind of touch on a couple of these things. Number one is I'm um, excited to share with you guys that this 2020.5 uh, release is actually live on our website today. So uh, it's a you know it's a major uh, point release for all owners of uh, 2020. So you can just download it free. Um, anyone who's using the Mocha standalone application, and Mary and I love to use the the plugin ourselves, but uh, there's a lot of users out there that still really appreciate to run Mocha as a standalone. That, that GStreamer um, uh, media engine point, that means that you're going to be able to open up a lot more uh, different types of video files than we used to. In the past, if you've ever opened up a video file in Mocha and saw a black screen, right? Uh, this, this is going to, uh, going to fix some of those issues. Right, because Mocha, the standalone used to be dependent on the QuickTime engine, um, and now it's not. That's right. Cool. All right, wonderful. So um, I want to show you really quick uh, the G Mask Tracer export. So what it does is it basically gives you a one-to-one -one, um, export from Mocha to uh, Flame. So if you use Bezier's, it's going to be one-to-one. -one. If you use um, X-Blinds, you're going to have a couple more points in here, but you will have your tracking data and your mask data separate. So if you need to make roto corrections, you can do that right in your host. Um, and that's been a really sought after um, export that Flame users had asked, asked us for. And then as far as um, some of the really exciting announcements we have, Ross mentioned that we have released today and then um, Silhouette Paint released yesterday. And we actually bundled those together um, for a really powerful paint and roto package together. Um, and it's a plug-in set that you can use inside of any host. Well, just about any host. Well, you can find out what exactly hosts on our website. Um, all right, so if you want any more information, go to borisfx.com, and I'm going to jump into shots and uh, stop telling and start showing. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about our tracking improvements, so let's show you that. And we'll talk a little bit about planar um, tracking and what planar tracking is. So for those of you that have never touched Mocha before, Mocha is a planar tracker, and what does that mean? It sounds like a buzzword. Um, what planar tracking means is that we track a pattern of pixels as they move relative to one another through the scene. Okay, and that sounds like programmer speak. So think about it as a texture tracker, and as long as that texture is moving in one direction, we can track it. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Um, if I want to track this hand, and it's doing this, this is two planes of motion that I need to track. Really, it's three because it's here, here, and here. Um, so think about splitting your objects up into what we would call um, marionette net style um, shapes or uh, think of it in terms of low poly models. Um, when you think about a face, for example, um, faces are not round at all. 
but people think they are, but this is a plane, this is a plane, this is a plane, and they're all at separate angles to one another. Um, so let's talk about how this works. So in order to get a planar track, what you have to do is you have to draw a shape, and this shape will be where Mocha looks for the track. And we're just going to go ahead and draw this out. Now, another thing that I like to do when I am tracking, in, and for those of you that have seen my tutorials before, we're always going to take our surface tool and we're going to align our surface tool to the plane that we're trying to track. And here's why. So I can turn this lovely grid tool on and we can really, really align this to the plane. Once we have aligned this to the plane, we can visually see what our track is going to look like. So we track five different parameters and here's the cool thing about it. This is where the track is looking, this little white square here. Let me make it red so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, this is where the track is looking, and the surface tool, the little blue square, is what the track is doing. We track five different parameters, which is translation, skew, rotation, shear, and perspective. And what's cool about that is, let me go ahead and hit track backwards, and I'll put the surface tool way up here in the front. I'm going to show you our new tracking improvements. You see how the surface tool is up here in the front? We're going to hit track backwards. Now that surface tool is going to go completely off screen into Z space forward. And what that's going to do is that's not going to meet cake in on itself. So for those of you that have used Mocha in the past, um, you may have noticed sometimes your shape would flip because the surface tool would go behind the camera. Um, now that problem has been solved. So if you need to start laying down real estate lines for drone videos or any sorts of challenging shots that in the past were just a little too challenging, um, we now have the ability to fix that for you. So we're really excited about that announcement. Hey, Mary, um, well, well, that's yeah. going. I thought uh, it would be fun just to take a couple quick questions that are related to, uh, when you show the grid, someone was asking if you can change the grid uh, size. I thought it would be interesting to show just the grid preferences, which is just like, there's so many things that not everyone, uh, you know, that you might not catch on your first use of Mocha. Yeah. Um, so let's go to our, actually, where are the grid preferences? Under view are. preferences. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. You got to yes. show the view. That's going to be, <laughs> where are my grid preferences? Upper right hand corner of your, your interface all the way to the right, your your view view preferences. This is my view preferences. No, on the, to the right above your viewer. All the way to the right, top oh, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like these. Right. So your grid divider. So you can increase your grid dividers here and here. Sorry, yeah. I lost them. I, felt, I feel like we must have moved them or I just forgot. That's cool. Um, yeah, if you have to show the grid to, to make. Yeah, so here's your grid. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Let's, okay, let's go ahead and close this. And now our grid has much more. Cool. Thanks a lot for, for helping answer that question. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I. you know what? That's literally the first time I've ever got that question. So good question. Yeah. So yeah, um, there's quite a lot right. there under the hood. <laughs> There is, there is. Would you believe I've been using this software for 10 years and there's still stuff I don't know about it? Um, like just because it's, you know, it's just incredibly uh, dense for those of you that want it. Okay, so you can see that that actually gives you a really good view of um, what your track is do doing. Another trick I wanna show you um, if we're talking about grids really fast is if that's not visual enough for you, if you need like a more um, visual um, clip, you can actually use an insert clip right here and the nice thing about this is if you're doing like a screen insert or something like that, this can show you right away whether or not your object that you're inserting is going to fit properly on, on, onto your surface tool. So it's yeah, a little you bit could different. Even, you could even channel that, that where, where you just showed that uh, insert clip. If you're using it in the plugin, you could even channel like another layer from After Effects or a different source if you wanted to. Yep, that's the yeah. insert layer one. And, and you can always do that in the host. But um, if you're in the standalone, you'd have to import it. So yeah. um, sometimes it's just really quick to get that 32 by 32 grid. So, you know, as anything in Mocha, there's like just a thousand ways to do something. So it's just going to depend on your preferences. Um, all right. So I'm going to move on um, talking about tracking. Um, I do want to mention just a couple of things really quick about tracking for those of you that are new to Mocha. Um, okay. So translation, we track five different things. Translation is the movement in X and Y, so that's really obvious, okay? Um, scale, also pretty obvious, like, okay, we understand that. Okay, rotation, super obvious, we all know what that does. But shear and perspective, what does that do? So shear is just the movement in X and Y here, okay? It's just a warp in X and Y, so if you're doing like a squib or like um, tracking somebody's shirt, you know, this is a good example to use. 
If you have a person turning their head away from you or a door opening, you want to use perspective. And that's the addition of Z space to that warp, okay? So that's the difference between shear and perspective. You only want to use the parameters that you need to use. Um, and you don't want to tell Mocha to use stuff that's not happening. So for example, if you have something that's not moving in Z space, go ahead, um, go ahead and turn perspective off because Mocha is a computer. It does exactly what you tell it to. Um, sometimes, you know, you tell it to do the wrong thing. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to some of our roto tools. And uh, while we're loading that up, are there any questions, Ross, that I can answer? No, I think people are pretty excited to see what you're showing. Um, I don't know if, if you, maybe it would be nice just to show how you get that track, like convert, you know, create the track data for, for people who haven't really seen the plugin. Sure, um, I'll show that uh, right here um, in this shot. Really okay, quick. great. Um, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about the area brush. So for those of you that don't know um, our new Roto tools, uh, I'm going to show those to you. Let's go ahead and delete this really quick. All right, so we have this new tool, and um, so we have our area brush. And one of the nice things about the air area, I'm sorry, that's the magnetic spline tool, area brush right here. <laughs> so um, the, one of the nice things about the area brush tool is we uh, now have this new thing called fill gaps. And we can do some interesting things here. We can either use open or close brackets to make these larger or smaller. Or we can click control and we can make our brush larger or smaller. Now, the cool thing about this is if I want to just, for instance, color correct this, I can just take, and this is pressure sensitive, I can just take my little shape here. And now when we hit quick mask, Mocha will fill that together based on our closed gaps. Because you saw how there were gaps in there and now they're not. Um, in the past, you know, it would just keep all of those. So we want to actually use fill gaps instead. So let's go ahead and delete that. All right, and delete that. And let's talk about some of the other tools we have. We have here this tool called the magnetic spline tool. I'm going to show you the difference between that and the X-splines. We have X-splines and Bezier's right here. Here's the thing about X-splines. I can come in here and I can try to follow the edge, but following the edge takes time. So I'm probably just gonna make a big sloppy shape around this. Okay, and call that a day. But what I can actually do is I can use the magnetic spline tool and I can ask Mocha to trace this object for me just as long as I'm coming up along the edge like this. And what's nice about this is it gives me a really articulated roto without me having to do just a ton of work. And we'll just come in here. So um, what's interesting about this is that um, I can take this spline, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete some of this mess of points down here that I made. Nope. Um, I can take this spline and I can take my detail um, down or I can leave it how it is. Um, the other thing about this is we have this tool called the freehand tool right here, and you can just use it to draw a shape really quickly. Now, what's nice about that is that we can use this freehand tool as part of the magnetic spline tool by either letting the magnetic spline tool find what it can, or I can click down, and as I'm using my magnetic spline tool, I can draw if I feel like it loses the edge. So yeah, there's a lot I, I of- I love that. Uh, I love that you can use the freehand tool and go off the edge of the screen. That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> it's super nice. So when you're, when you're doing all these, you know, when you're trying edge snapping, you wouldn't want to just come up here along the edge. And that's actually like a limitation of, you know, I've, I've used programs like Photoshop for a long time, you know, and when you ever use that magnetic tool, it always wants to stay along the edge of something. Um, and then you have to use the lasso tool to go around. What's nice about this is that's just built into the workflow. Um, so let's talk a little bit about actual rotoscoping and I'm going to show you edge snapping. And oh, I meant to show you exports, but we'll we'll do that in our roto. That's fine. Let's go to the other thing, Mary, that someone was asking about, which maybe we can just cover really quickly, is just how to how to take a spline and make it into an open spline. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah, cool. All right, so if we come over here, um, all we need to do is click on our spline, and then we'll right click. In theory. 
Yeah, while you're doing that, I'm just going to answer a couple of questions. Some people are asking about, you know, how many points are on the spline? Does that re relate to the better tracking? And and, and really, that's the, the points on the spline. Think of the spline as just the search area, and the tracking is tracking all the pixels within that search area. So Mocha doesn't really care about how many points are on your spline, but mm -hmm. you as the artists are going to care when you get into rotoscoping. Yes, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, here in a second. So if you want to open a spline, you right click and you go to open spline. Okay, so it's it's a drop down menu. It'll just pop up in the middle of your screen, spline and open spline. Um, all right, and let's talk about tracking and um, exporting for Roto. Okay, so with this shot, what this shot is, is this shot is a, um, a shot I'm going to use to make a depth mat with. Um, I used to do a lot of stereo conversion for those of you that don't know um, stereo conversion requires you to roto everything and then make a depth mat and then um, you project that uh, you make that depth depth mat into like a 3d object you project project the textures on top of it and you can put two cameras right and left eye that's one technique there's a thousand techniques to um, convert things uh, into stereo but the gist is that um, you need a depth mat and a lot of times you don't have one so you have to create one by hand um, so in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to track every piece of this guy. And you can see that I've tracked this in pieces. You see it's cut up marionette style. And the reason for that is that um, you can see this arm is straight, okay, but this other arm is bending. All right, so you notice I have one shape here and two shapes here. If this guy were bending his arm, I would do two shapes, but I'm not. But since this guy's bending his arm here, these are two different sets of planar data. So I use that bottom track to fill in his arm on the bottom and the top track on the top. Now, here's how Mocha works. Let's go in here and track this head from scratch. So we have this flare here and you can see, I'm just gonna show you this really quick. We have this flare that I sort of rotoscoped and tracked um, in our shot and I'm gonna put that at the top of the layer pile because one of the things that Mocha does is Mocha treats everything at the top of the layer pile as closest to camera and every subsequent object lower in the layer pile, Mocha will treat like further from the camera, which means that if you stack, this is user defined. So if you stack foreground objects at the top of the layer pile and roto everything behind them in successive layers, what you'll always have is you'll always have holdout maps for everything that you're tracking. So because this flare goes over my guy and he goes, it, huge you know even though it doesn't look huge it is huge because there's a lot of um there's a lot of light fall off you can see here 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 and here um the thing about mocha is mocha is a planar tracker it looks at texture um it's going to interpret all of that as texture and it's going to throw my track off so we want to isolate that and then mocha will hold that out from the rest of our tracks now if i want to start tracking this head for example what i'm going to use is i'm going to take my magnetic spline tool and i'm going to just come in here and draw a nice magnetic shape right around my hoodie. When I get to the shoulders, I'm going to click and draw down and then right click to close. Okay, now I'm going to take this and select all of it. I'm going to go down to my detail layer. I'm going to take my details down. Okay, and now I'm going to soften this and we're going to go ahead and start tracking. But what I want to show you is how we're going to track this roto. So I told you we track five different parameters with rotoscoping. If you're rotoing organic objects, don't use perspective. It's just going to get too wonky, okay? It'll, it'll give you too much tracking data, and there is such a thing when you're doing rotoscoping. If you're tracking rigid bodies, go ahead and use perspective. But organic bodies, like people, animals, plants that are moving in the wind, that kind of thing, go ahead and use shear. Um, now, we're going to hit track backwards, all right? And what I want you to see here is that um, Mocha is looking at this texture and then giving me this tracking data based on that texture. I wanna show you one more thing about this. Look, we're gonna move this over here. All right, and keep tracking. Yeah, very cool, showing the, uh, the relationship between the, uh, the search area and the surface, which is your tracking data. Exactly, so this is where Mocha is looking. This is what the track is doing. And it's completely independent. So you see how that did not animate? It's just wherever I move that tracking data. Okay, that's where the tracking data is. Because the surface tool, think of the surface tool as your translation tool. That puts the math that Mocha is doing into a visual representation. And you can move that visual representation anywhere. What this is, is this is your corner pin export and your transform export here in the middle. And you can export your tracking data here into whatever you would like, including the new After Effects power pin. 
um, CC power pin export. But hey, you Mary. can see that, yes. I'm sorry, if that's a convenient time to, someone's asking, uh, since we're talking about different uh, tracking techniques, uh, can you explain a little bit about the minimum uh, minimum amount of pixels you use selection down there? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm interested in this. I'm always wondering this as well. So yeah, I'm going to take, <laughs> take, take notes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, this is what we call your basically your accuracy, right? Your minimum percent of pixels used. What that means is um, at, right now it's set. You see how it's a percentage, right? So right now it's set at 50. So that means that 50% of the pixels inside of this, once Mocha finds 50% of the pixels on one frame, it's going to go ahead and jump to the next frame. If you crank this value up to 100, Mocha is going to look for 100% of that, uh, that data before it says, OK, I can move on to the next frame. But here's the thing about that. The higher this number is, the slower Mocha's tracking is going to be. And like, look, Mocha's tracker is fast. I'm not going to lie. But here's the thing. When you're tracking large areas, you kind of want to make this number lower. If you're tracking little tiny areas, you want to make this number as high as possible. Okay. Now, even though this accuracy is set really, really high, this is where the track is looking. This is what the track is doing. You can see that it's not following the edge. That's because we don't have edge snapping built into the tracker. But what we do is we allow you to correct for that edge stamping over time. So what you need to think about in Mocha is that Mocha is your roto assistant, okay? And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, all of the blue data in this line when it's done tracking is going to be the tracking um, data that Mocha has created. So that's how it's your roto assistant. It creates tracking data so that you can correct it over time. And then we use, as artists, we use the principles of animation um, which is to say animating in the arcs of the animation, you know, think of your traditional um, squash and stretch animations. And we look for the arcs of the movement, which is to say we look for where the object is the most different from its original starting point. So here is our original starting point. I'm going to go ahead and center this into the screen. I'm going to show you one more cool tool here, which is this tool called the stabilize, the um, uh, quick stabilize mode. What that's going to do is that's going to pin your shape into the middle of your screen based on your track. For those of you that were watching Ben's silhouette tutorial, um, this is a similar technique. Um, you don't have to create a node or anything. It just pins it into the center of the screen so that you can um, rotoscope more accurately. But here's the thing. Notice how we're looking for where this is the most different. So here's where the object is the most different. I'm going to take my, um, my point selection tool and I'm going to grab around my, um, my points here. I'm going to get this a little bit closer and I'm going to hit um, Alt S and Alt S will snap that to my edges now. Um, we're going to move this here and I'm going to just grab these points here and I'm going to hit Alt S and then I'm going to grab these points here and Alt S and Alt S. Up, oh, undo. Well, here, let's come over here. So it's looking for edges, and because it's pretty sensitive, sometimes Mocha will think edges are things like, you know, parts of this cloud. All right, so that is now my snapped edge. And what's nice about this is I didn't have to move that by hand. So now I'm going to look for any other errors, and we're going to select our points again, and we're going to hit Alt-S. And what that'll do is that'll snap to those edges again. So what's nice about this is really quickly I can start to correct my keyframes. And you can see here is the work that Mocha has done for me um, itself in blue, and then the green um, dots are my keyframes that I have made to correct for that shape. So what we end up with, as we turn our little um, stabilize off, is Roto that moves nice and smoothly in our shot um, based on the track. And what's cool about using the tracking data is that it really hides a lot of your sins um, by even if your roto isn't 100% accurate, it's not pixel perfect, because it's moving along with the object really naturally according to the motion, you end up getting um, some pretty natural roto. So let me turn this back on, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Yeah, I'm going to point out that that edge snapping, um, that is a Mocha Pro feature, not a it Mocha is. AE, but uh, that is also something that's been recently updated. Uh, in fact, <laughs> the, the release just came out today, for which you can... Uh, do what Mary was just doing and, and select multi points at the same time for the edge snapping. Exactly. So here's my finished roto. I want to show you really quickly on this headpiece. You can see that all of this blue is what Mocha did and all of the green are my keyframes. So you can see that Mocha saved me a lot of work. 
when you rotoscope in Mocha, you roto in about half the time and use about a third of the keyframes that you can use. And I stand by those numbers. I, like I said, I used to do stereo conversion. And um, the reason I started using Mocha in the first place is because I had a friend uh, that saw me struggling with a roto shot that was boats shot from another boat. And he's like, why aren't you using Mocha for this? I was like, I don't know. Like, why don't you show me, you know? And so he sat down and showed me and I was like, Oh, I'd been rotating for a day and a half. He finished rotating my shot in 15 minutes and I wanted to cry. Yeah, we hear these stories so much, Mary, right? When we go on site and people they either they've heard of Mocha, but they've never really jumped into it or else they might use it just for tracking and they don't even think to use it for roto, but it's such a huge time saver. Um, I want to make one point about the shot that you're showing actually, because I know there's a lot of Adobe uh, After Effects users here who might sort of say, well, I like to use the roto brush for this kind of shot. Mm -mm. Um, the rotor brush is a great, great tool, but if you notice the way the technique that Mary used where she broke up this uh, person into marionette style, you really can't do that with the rotor brush and you can't have the kind of finesse and control over keyframing that you that uh, Mary is doing here. So personally, that's, that's you know, I think the rotor brush is, is fantastic for some quick tasks, but to have the power that you need to do articulate roto, um, we really recommend this kind, these kind of techniques. Yeah, so look, don't get me wrong. The Roto tool is an excellent tool. And here's what I think the Roto tool is, the Roto brush tool is great for. I think it's great for background objects and mid-ground objects. I really don't think it's good for hero objects in your shot. And it certainly isn't good when you have this much interference over here. The reason that we were able to track this arm is because we actually track the arm over here. And then we extend that track down the arm in order to get our Roto. And here's why that works. Okay, when you are Rotoing, um, when you're using planar tracking, all right, let's say my hand is the plane. These pixels are always gonna be moving faster than these and faster than these and faster than these. That relationship between those pixels, that math is gonna be constant because it's a plane. So for those of you that are into geometry, right? That plane is always gonna be moving the same and the, the math data between those points is always going to, the difference is always gonna be the same. Okay, so when you're tracking something and you have an, um, an occlusion here, uh, you can track back here on the plane and you can still get all of the data. So for this arm, we track back here and avoided most of the smoke mess. And that's really, really important when you're doing complex visual effects, which this is. Um, you can take this shape data and out of Mocha Pro, you can export it in a copy and paste um, mode to whatever host you like, including Fusion, G Masks. Obviously, we have After Effects. We um, do the old Final Cut, not the new Final Cut. Um, okay, and we do um, the flame uh, tracer, and we do uh, exports for hit film and um, does Premiere support the shapes again? Or does yes, it stop? yeah, okay. yep. And Premiere now supports the shapes again. So let's go ahead and hit cancel there, um, and we can copy and paste that, or we can actually apply it in the plugin. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. I think people would actually love to see just how you would apply it in the plugin. Mm -hmm. Great. Hey, hey, one thing I know, I know flame artists across the world are singing with joy at, at uh, GMAS Tracer support. So, I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've heard that request. So that's an amazing new feature in uh, 2020.5. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really stoked about it. Um, so let's go over here to our, um, our mats, and um, I'll just show you all of this stuff. So in our plugin interface, um, I know we had mentioned that you can do an insert layer. So if I wanted to insert something into the shot, I can select any of my layers. Um, and use that as my insert layer. So that means I can apply it um, from my host into my plugin. But let's talk about Roto. If I want to apply this Roto, I can come over here to my mat section. I can either um, view my mat or apply my mat, right? And apply will apply it like a plugin. So it'll just be a black and white mask. Or I can come and oh, by the way, that supports motion blur. And I'll show you the motion blur thing here in a second. Um, so we can feather our mask when we apply it, or we can go to create AE masks. And that will actually create native After Effects splines uh, right here in our plugin. It takes a second for it to do because it's copying and pasting all the data over, and then it will apply those masks to your shot. The nice thing about this is that when you do that, those native AE masks are much faster than anything else that um, is happening inside of the plugin. And um, let's, there we go. So you can see there's my masks applied to my shot, just like that. So I'm gonna undo that because I actually have all of those roto shapes right here on a uh, mask. And what I'm using is I'm actually using those roto shapes to create a very rudimentary, and I mean rudimentary, this is not, not a, this is, this is not a good depth mat. It's just a basic depth mat because I'm trying to apply more fog to this shot. 
Um, and what you can actually use a, um, a depth map kind of like this, I think, in Sapphire now, can't you, Brian? Yeah, Z mat. The Z, yep. the Z, Z depth could, could uh, take advantage of this. Exactly, which was uh, kind of what I was I'm, thinking when I was making this. I'm, so over anyway, here, I'm over here talking on mute. like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally. Ross nailed it. Yep, you can use it with any of the Z effects, like Z blur or Z fog or Z to focus. Exactly. So, um, so now we have this lovely, um, this lovely fog that we can add back to our shot. Um, let's go back to our shot here over on... Um, there we go. Um, and what we've done is I've just used this as a, a quick and dirty mask over a uh, BCC. Actually, um, we use particle illusion for this to get some fog. And I'm just using this as a mask to mask the fog back in. And what we have is a much more foggy shot um, using that roto now. And it looks like he's moving through the fog um, rather than uh, just sitting on top of it, which is important. Okay, because you don't want the level of fog happening on the background happening on our foreground object. All right. Um, so that's just a really basic example of the kind of stuff you can do with Roto. Obviously, you can do all kinds of um, crazy stuff with Roto. Motion blur masking. All right. So we actually have, I'm just going to come in here. Inside of Mocha, we've always had this lovely um, motion blur option that I don't know that everybody knows about. It will not export to native splines, but what it will do is it will um, create motion blur based off your roto shapes right here in Mocha. And then you can use these roto shapes um, inside of the plugin. So all we do is we hit apply mat. All right. And now it's actually four times faster. So if we're rendering this in real time here in After Effects, there's our motion blur right over our background. All right. Yeah, for, for this release, we really tried to focus on just improving the software overall. So, you know, it's it's a point release, but it, it is pretty major. Lots of great features that will just sort of improve day to day use of Mocha and really try exactly. to address, uh, you know, some of the feature requests that people have been asking us for. Yes. So it's a pretty it's a pretty amazing tool. Um, and I do want to show uh, a little bit about mega plates um, and, you know, as opposed to yesterday, we have my GPU turned on. So let's go ahead and launch Mocha. Um, I'm gonna really quickly talk a little bit about um, OCIO color management um, before I jump into this, but uh, we did add OCIO color management, which means that you can change your config files, you can change your working space, um, which is gonna be really important for people working in a pipeline. So you can make sure that your workspace is correct across the board. This is really, really important when you're working in programs like Nuke and when you're using, um, when you're creating a visual effects pipeline. Uh, do you have anything you want to add to that, Ross? Yeah, sure. Yeah, color management has just become a much bigger issue in the last couple of years, especially as, you know, uh, sites like Netflix and Amazon are streaming, uh, you know, HDR material and, you know, recommending ACES workflows. So it is really important to have a, a solid color management workflow between your effects department and your editorial and your finishing department. And now uh, we're pretty happy that uh, three of our four major products have uh, OCIO built into them. So both Mocha, uh, Silhouette, and uh, Sapphire all have OCIO now. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty strong, um, well, for the people that needed it, it was a very strongly insistent request. So um, I, I think it's great that we added it. We actually um, now, have a couple new tutorials on our website too. Uh, we have a specific OCIO uh, video that Dan Harvey just did. So you guys could check that out on our website. Absolutely. And you know, that's a good time to plug all of the free training on our website, which is to say we have tons and tons and tons of free training. If you don't know how to use our tools, do not worry. We have got you. Okay, we got you, fam. Just go to our website, go to borisfx.com, go to the video tutorial section, or you can go to the training section, and we'll have the um, the getting started series for our tools uh, right there inside of um, our website. Yeah, uh, one thing that I think a lot of people miss too is that when you go to that training section, you can actually uh, use the tags. So if you wanted to learn about, say, the adjust track module, or you want to learn more about the remove module, it's a way to filter out all the videos and just find what you want. Exactly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about mega plates, which I think are just a really cool tool that we've added in um, Mocha 2020. And what it is, is it allows you to, I don't know if you guys have ever done matte paintings, but my early career, I did a lot of matte paintings and I still actually kind of do some, but, um, but the thing about matte paintings is when you create matte paintings, um, 
if you have to do large panos, you know, to, to cover the background of something, you know, how many of you guys have used Photoshop to do that and had it not match up with the lens or match up with the tracking? And then you have to like cram it back in and like warp it and try to fit it or put it on geometry or whatever. Um, what we did is we took remove technology and our planar tracking and we created these, um, this thing called mega plates, which connects your shot for you based on the tracking data. Now you've been able to do stuff like this in Nuke for a while, but what you do is you have to use a node tree, you have to freeze frame and then you move it and then you freeze frame it again and then you freeze frame it again all along a stabilized tracking data and then you blend all those together manually. This is an automated process. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our little guy here and we're going to track him first make sure that he's um, available to be held out of any tracks that we do on the ground. Um, I didn't end up absolutely strictly having to do that, but it's going to be important later that we roto him out. Um, what we also did is we tracked the background. You can tell I have a different tra track for the background than I do for the plate itself. So here is the track, and I'm going to show you a cool thing, which is link to track. So we did not track this mega plate um, uh, shape. What we did is we linked it to the mega plate track. This is a really important workflow in Mocha, guys. Um, yep. Whenever we talk about this, I always I always feel like this is the one thing. If you're going to get one thing from this training, you know, from this session, link to track. <laughs> yes, link to track and unlink to track, which I know is your favorite, Ross, and I'll show that yeah. also in a minute. Um, okay, so we'll show that for the 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 remove. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to link that mega plate track to our track, and here's why. When you're tracking, it is not always best to track a huge shape because the larger your shape is, the more likely that shape is to have occlusions, um, any sort of imperfections, fog, smoke, shadows, light changes, whatever, stuff that will mess up your track because, again, Mocha is a texture tracker and it's a computer and it does exactly what you tell it to do. So if you tell it track this whole big set of data, it's going to do that, okay? And that data might not be the data that you need. So we're going to track this mega plate track and then link this to it. And then what we're going to do is I've already baked this track cake for you. So just, you know, bear with me here. I'll show you what that track looks like. Um, let's turn the surface tool on and let's go ahead and align it. And this is another one of those things where um, having those tracking improvements matters. Look at how far out that surface tool is going. And it's, it's just perfect. Okay. All right. So we're going to take our mega plate and we are going to make a shape that covers this entire beach area. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn my overlays off. So this looks extra impressive. And I'm going to say, Hey, Mocha, build out that plate for me so that I can paint it or whatever, you know, and um, we're going to go ahead and hit mega plate tab and we're going to hit render. And you can see that Mocha is going to think about it up here. And since we're using the GPU, this is actually quite fast and it builds out my plate for me based on my track. So here's my original plate and then here's the shape that I defined my mega plate track for. Now here's what we can also do. I don't want that guy in here because he's cramping my style and if I need to like go ahead and like re-import this back into the shot I'm going to want him out because I don't want him frozen into my plate. So we're going to click on foreground talent and we're going to say hey remove foreground. Excuse me. Well are you not going to play nice today? Let's go to remove foreground. I don't know why that's not working. Let's try it again. Let's go to mega plate. Let's hit render. And let's go ahead and hit remove foreground. Great. I love it. When Mocha embarrasses me in front of company, we're going to show you a different <laughs> mega plate and we'll just show you from scratch. Let's go over. We're amongst you. friends. <laughs> I know, but still, it's like. That's us. That's anyway. cool. While, while you're uh, searching for that clip, just I think it's really cool that you can you can kind of build this. Ex I call them extended plates, but the much larger frame you know si frame size. So you could have you know if you you could have an HD source and literally depending on how much motion you could uh, basically get like a a 2K or a 4K or a larger uh, plate out of that. And what I oh. like about that is that then you can just paint on that one clean frame instead of having to paint multiple clean frames. Yeah, so here's an example of that. Um, this is a long, 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 long shot. Okay, and this would be a real pain to do by hand. What we're going to do is we're going to track this background using unlinked to track. So I take my shape here, and you can see that it's linked to none. That means this shape is going to stay here, and look what my track does. My track moves, 
while it reads all of the pixels that move underneath this shape like a scanner. Okay, so now I can take my background, my mega plate shape, and I can link that to the track. And what I want to make sure is that I just want to make sure that the shape covers the entire area that the car is going over. And so what we can do is let's go to like, I don't know. and let's uh, go ahead and hit our mega plate and let's go ahead and hit render. And what Mocha will do, again, this is much longer, so it's going to take just a little bit more time than it took uh, previously, but even so, it's still pretty good. And it's going to build out this huge long plate for me based oh, on cool. my trick. So awesome, so awesome. So yeah, it's, now, it's similar to like uh, video stitching, you know, it's yeah. a nice way to think about it. So now when I hit remove foreground, it's like my top layer and hit remove foreground, it'll remove for me. Um, I think my old uh, file was cached and just needed to be purged, but rather than deal with that in the demo. If you're ever having a problem, you can go over here and go to your clear cache. And this is a good tip. Uh, go ahead and delete this entire cache. All right. And what that'll do is that will uh, purge any sort of uh, cache that you have that's going on in your shot. But you can see that this is a pretty good stitch. Um, there's some errors to it. And you can see that where the car moved over and it couldn't see enough behind the car, it couldn't replace the object. But what's nice about this is I can now take this entire plate and I can paint it and fix it and do anything I want to it. I can fix the clouds and this blown out sky and adjust the mountain. And now when I put it back in my shot, it can actually uh, reload back into my shot. So this is a really cool tool to have. Um, I highly recommend using the mega plate tool. It is a lot of and, fun. And combined with silhouette to paint too, I think it's very cool because then you could be like, do have all this data that you've just created as, as clone sources, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can freeze frame that using silhouette paint um, right inside your shot. So that's a really cool trick to do. Um, we have very little time left. So I want to touch on removes really quick. Um, and let's talk about, yeah, here, this one. All right, so. Just to answer quickly, a bunch of people wondering, Mary, like what you're using for workstation and GPU, you are on the Dell Precision Laptop with NVIDIA Quadro GPU, correct? I am, and I'm using um, a Wacom, uh, I wanna say it's a one tablet. It's a little secondary yeah. screen tablet. Um, so uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm using a, uh, a Dell Precision Laptop and a uh, Wacom tablet. Oh, shows you awesome. shows you what we think of the performance out of the Dell laptops that were, you know, that we're using them for these type of presentations. So um, really, really amazing, um, really amazing stuff. These laptops are portable desktops. At yeah, this point. basically, we're, we're at that point in the technology beast, stream. Beast laptops. So um, let's talk a little bit about removes. Okay, um, let's say I wanted to take the dog out of the shot and put in like an alien dog or something, but we needed to shoot a reference plate um, to put it in. So that means we got to take an object out and put like a CG object in. Okay. Um, the thing about that is removes are actually pretty difficult to do. Um, so if I draw a shape around my dog, for example, I could try to use a mocha shape and I could try to use content aware fill. And here's the thing about content aware fill does really good on small to medium objects, doesn't really do great on large objects, and it doesn't really do great on super complex backgrounds that can't be 3D camera solved very well. If you can 3D um, camera solve a shot really well, then content to where feel, fill will nail it. Um, but if you can't, and for a lot of shots you can't, um, then you can use something like Mocha. So I, I, I'm not terrifying, poo -poo. Mary. That's terrifying. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and I, I certainly don't want to poo-poo content aware fill because I think it's a great tool. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't give you a lot of choice to start making um, other decisions about your shot. <laughs> and you're right. It is terrifying. It's like, um, the, it's like the predator coming at me there. <laughs> a little bit predatory. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you want to, also, if you see that predator effect and you're using the remove module inside of Mocha, you know what you've got? a bad track. Go ahead and fix your track and it'll look better. Um, so, and that's like 90% of the problems when people talk about removes on the forums or whatever, they're like, what's wrong with my remove? It looks terrible. It's like, it's, it's a bad track every time, every single time. Um, so that's why it's important to turn that surface tool on and check what the background track is doing. Um, all right, so if you wanna do a remove on this shot, here's what's cool about this. Uh, I talked about planar tracking and how you have to track separate planes. Um, let's go to our selected layer. So what we've done here is we've tracked our grass. And again, look at that new tracking, just doing so good with that perspective shift. Um, and then we track the background just like this. And again, I've already baked this tracking cake for you, but you can see that we track that background. Now here's the thing about this background. 
This background is multiplayer planar, okay? This sort of technique will not work on every single shot um, that you have if, if your motion is not moving similarly. Because this is such a, sh a fast shot and such a whip pan shot, um, you can get away with tracking the whole background together. If this were a slower moving shot, I would need to track this house separate, this tree separate, and this top, these top of the trees separate, okay? So um, think about the motion that's happening in your shot and track that, okay? Um, so now what I can do is I can take my dog and I can go ahead and click on my dog and I can click on my remove module and I can just go ahead and let's come down, I don't know, somewhere around here and let's hit render so you can see over a complex background. Boom. Takes my dog right out of my scene. There's my overlay has gone. You can see what it did. So we can save this and we can close it. And then back inside of After Effects, I can actually just go to check my render checkbox and remove and render it right back to my shot just like this. Never gets old for me. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, and if you want even more control, you can separate your removes into like um, a grass remove and a background remove and sort of blend the line between the two. And for any other sins that are still left in the remove, because the remove module is good, um, but sometimes there are some things that you want to touch up. Go ahead and use Silhouette Paint on a pre-comp. Just pre-compose this whole thing, move all the attributes into that composition, and then hide any of the rest of your sins with Silhouette Paint really quickly, and your shot is done. So I've been doing a lot of paint and matte painting and roto paint and rotoscoping, you know, visual effects for my entire visual effects career. And when I started using Mocha, I doubled my workflow and I never stopped using it. And now I work for you guys. So, you know, that's how it goes. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Very cool. Uh, I think we covered quite a lot in the time, uh, mm -hmm. Mary. Always a great uh, presentation. And I think people just get a lot out of just uh, just seeing how you use the software and kind of little, little uh, you know, aha moments keep happening for a lot of people, which is great to see. Yeah. I love that. And that, that's the nice thing about live demos, right? Because like when you do a tutorial, you know, you're trying to cram as much information into a small piece of uh, space as possible and you end up missing those little details that people like to see. So even when um, Mocha like, you know, has like a caching error like we had earlier, you know, on a live demo, I can show you how to fix that um, rather than just uh, let you sit in frustration. So I'm really happy to be able to show you stuff even when it, uh, you know, has some tweaks. Cool. And we definitely appreciate everyone who's tuned in to, to view these presentations. Uh, I think Brian has some really fun stuff to talk about. Yeah, let's give yeah. away some let's give away some prizes, right? Mary, you want to um, do me a favor and stop sharing your screen? Of course I can. Um, uh, I'll, to e I'll let to, you be Oprah here. here. Cool. I mean, to echo, you know, both both your points about the unlink track. I mean, I, I can't agree more, even for me personally, like when I was learning Mocha, it took me a long time. I think Ross, you gently tried to nudge me in that direction several <laughs> times, right? But Mocha's, you can jump in so easily, right? And just, and track it incorrectly, but it works so much of the time that it took me a while to really wrap my head around unlinking. But then once you do get that watershed moment, um, it really was like groundbreaking for me. Now I realize like I can pretty much track anything um, and not have to deal with my mistakes. Yeah, right, yeah. Cool. Once you kind of really get that sort of uh, understand the relationship between that those splines and, and the track data and the unlink and the ability to have uh, multiple spline search areas and animated uh, search areas that come in out of the screen and you know it, it's very very powerful stuff. Yeah, I mean and, you uh, can actually animate a shape right around the top of something if you know if you have an occlusion yeah. walking through. You don't always have to do an, a holdout shape. It's really fun for us because we, you know, over the years, people have always, uh, you know, forwarded us footage and said, I'm having such a problem with this particular track. And, um, you know, for us to, to e either just improve the tool to, based on these different challenges or just kind of share different ways to think about it, um, it it's usually you can solve almost any kind of shot. Yep. I, remember, I remember it was JP at, at an NAB just one time just was like, why are you doing it like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe maybe you could show me how to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is to the power of the software yeah. that a lot of people can go in there and just without even ever reading a manual and just kind of draw a shape and hit track. And they're like, wow, it follows. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, once the more you use it, it, it becomes for me or Mary, you know, it becomes that uh, that uh, that tool in your in your toolkit that you just always, you know, always reach for 
Yeah. You know, actually, one of my favorite things to do is when we still, you know, when we were doing on sites uh, before everybody got locked down. Um, I'm in Los Angeles, so I go around to studios all over Los Angeles and I'll troubleshoot. And I always have like every single demo, there's always some artist that comes up like after the demo is like, so I have this one shot. Can you come look at it? And like, and I, I go look at it and sometimes I can just solve it in like 15 or 20 minutes. And that usually is mind blowing, you know, and it's, it's so fun to do. It like gives you like, you're like, I'm so glad I could help, you know, it just feels really good to be able to do that. Okay. Let's give away some prizes. Um, so first off, we're going to give away a, a um, $1,500 gift certificate to an FMC online class. It's future media concepts. They do amazing training for all post-production applications like After Effects or Premiere, pretty much anything nowadays. Um, Kez FX um, wins that watching on YouTube. That is K-E-Z-F-X. Kez FX, congratulations, uh, wins that gift certificate to FMC online watching on YouTube. Um, staying with the effects team, Space Effects, watching on YouTube. Space Effects wins a license for Vegas Pro. Congratulations, Space Effects. Um, Jimmy Gilbert. Oh, sorry. I totally horribly butchered that. Jimmy um, Gilberti. That is um, G I. L I B E R T I watching on Facebook wins a one year subscription to Avid Media Composer. Congratulations, Jimmy Gilberti. Um, Rob Hendricks watching on FaceTube. Rob wins the Boris Effects bundle, which is Sapphire Continuum and Mocha Pro, a one year subscription. Nice um, congratulations to Rob. Um, James Westlake watching on Facebook. James, you won a one year subscription to the full um, silhouette. Congratulations to James. Get silhouette for one year. Um, and on Twitter, uh, Marie0520, I'm going to spell this, that is at M-A-R-I-E-E-E-0520, watching on Twitter, wins a one-year subscription to Silhouette Paint, so congratulations. Tom Scollard, watching on YouTube, wins Isotope RX7, amazing audio plugins. I use these all the time, so um, Isotope RX7, great for denoising. Um, Tom Scollard uh, wins on YouTube and at J Stevens 85 Jason Stevens watching on Twitter you were in the Coral Melt Chromatic plus Paint X bundle for FCPX so congratulations to J Stevens 85 congratulations to all the winners and thank you to our sponsors thank you to Mary for an amazing presentation I always learn something every time we watch so thank you so much um, great job and thank you Ross too um, so we are going to be back at three o'clock with Ben Brownlee looking at Sapphire 2020.5. He's going to be deep diving Sapphire lens flares. And I'm sure talking about uh, the integrated Mocha Pro positional tracking within lens flares. So come back and join us at three o'clock. We'll be giving away some other awesome prizes like a $200 gift certificate to Action VFX, another Seat of Vegas Pro, a subscription to Avid Media Composer, Core Melt Paint X, and the Boris FX Bundle, the Silhouette one-year subscription, Silhouette Paint one-year subscription. So come back and see us at 3 o'clock. Once again, everything we sell is on sale right now. Multi-product bundles are on sale for 50% off, and um, all single products are 25% off. So if you want to upgrade to Mocha Pro, you want to upgrade to the latest version, um, and right now is the time to do it with 25% off. Um, all the winners, please be patient with us. We'll try and reach out to you um, through whatever social platform um, you watched on, but probably give us till about Friday um, to kind of track everyone down, but we will find you and give you your prizes. So thank you so much, everyone. Thanks again, Mary. Amazing presentation. And thank you, Ross. And we'll see everybody at three o'clock. Thanks all for right, joining thanks for everyone. Having. All right. Thanks everybody. Take care. See you later.